few additional questions uh, other than we talked about before. I'm wondering from both of your perspectives, what kinds of things need to be developed on the technical side? It sounds like a lot of this, you know, you're talking about the, the lack of great editing. Are there other, you know, does that side of things need to be more robust? Would that help buy-in? Um, uh, it really depends. I mean, there, there are some big editor projects underway at the moment, and Pressbooks has become a really good platform for textbook creation, if that's what we're talking about. Um, there are also quite a few uh, homework, ancillary material type of things that need to be both developed and maintained in order to uh, provide a better solution for people who are using online homework systems at the moment. So for example, in mathematics, um, a lot of people are very well connected to Pearson and uh, the My Math Lab application. Um, My Open Math is a move towards being able to have an open source solution for that, but having uh, a textbook agnostic platform that's really reliable for students um, would be very necessary, I think. Okay. And I think that editing, I think it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, when I switched over to the LibreText, that made life a lot easier. It's just, it's just a user-friendlier editor. The other one worked, but, but some of that was personal preference. And what Jeff was saying about the homework system, we still, uh, in my class, we still have a homework system, a subscription service um, that we chose the one that was textbook agnostic so that we could use whichever book we wanted to. Um, the cost of that was, because we have such large numbers, was reduced and we was like, kind of okay with doing that because they weren't having to buy a book anymore, so we were minimizing that cost. And just keeping those things up to date and maintaining that is a huge undertaking. So for us, the cost of having to have that. But you know, if there was something out there, there was some consortium of people working on that for chemistry, that would be fantastic. Um, I am not volunteering to do that because right. of that. <laughs> and so, but it's nice, even if you do need to do a home, a subscription for something else, a cost, it's minimizing that co one cost and it's, you know, it's a trade-off. They're still much better off than they were when they were buying both of those options. How do you see some of these OERs changing higher ed? Is, does, is it changing the library and faculty relationship or is the greater change with the student uh, educational experience, some of both? Um, I think it's probably some of both. I mean, I've seen from my student side is that now that I have a book that goes in the order I want it to, that goes covers the material I want it to cover, and if there's something I'm not covering, I just leave that out. I just don't cover it. And so for students, they can see, get just the material they need because students are overwhelmed with textbooks, with online systems. I mean, we use several online systems just in our class for various things. So they're getting overwhelmed with information. And if they Google a topic, I mean, if they Google carbohydrate molecules, just so much information that I feel like I can pare it down to the essentials of what they need to know to be able to do the activities to understand the level that they need to be able to do. So I think it really improves the relationship. And also, when they go, well, I don't, this explanation doesn't make sense, and they tell me that, I can fix it. And they see that I really do care about their learning and can adapt to that. I, I guess I could add, uh, and I neglected to say this at first, but I was a librarian before I wound up as an administrator for this program. And um, that's quite common. A lot of librarians are involved in open educational resource implementation. And I think it's really helped to demonstrate uh, to faculty the idea of the librarian as information professional and not just as provider of books and provider of journals. Um, it, it's, you start to grasp at the core concept that it's more about a knowledge of processes and evaluation methods and that you know literacy is more than being able to read. It's knowing the nature of information itself. Uh, having librarians as information professionals means that when you're looking for OER, you can get somebody who is an expert searcher and an expert evaluator to help you out with that, and sometimes an expert at hosting these materials that you're creating too. So I think, especially within our system, we're starting to see a lot more faculty understand what librarians can do. And even if the whole OER movement is something completely different in 20 years, I think we're going to have a more mutual understanding of what librarians can do with the upcoming issues uh, because of that. 
how how uh, do you go about building building this coalition of the willing of, of, of faculty? Um, you know, I know you have a more statewide mandate. You know, you're on the ground. Uh, how, how does that look from your perspective? So for me, I mean, with of course this, I had the advantage of it's just me um, with our. Um, since we have large multi-section courses, our textbook selection is by committee. And so when, as we were going to that, we kind of, each of us contributed what our, we had a stack of books that was high, half the tide of me. And when you looked up their price on Amazon, it was terrifying about the cost of the book sitting on my desk. Um, but we also contributed and said, okay, what is, what are your favorite books? What are your favorite chapters? Why do you like these books? And so we did get into the discussion of the advantages and disadvantages of open. So, and there were some, there's still some resistance. Some of the old guard are used to very traditional approaches, and they're not. They're they're a little anxious about the quality of materials, um, and so I think that's once they can start to see that. Oh wait, this book went through peer review. It went through all these vetting processes. It's been evaluated. I think that helps, and I think it helps that I kind of started this in one class, so they can kind of see. Oh wait, this worked in her class. Let's try it in another class. So I think it's just it's that proof of concept of showing it works and letting them see the quality is there will help get more and more faculty on board. Jeff, from your perspective, do you find, um, you know, what have you learned for seeing this at a more statewide level? Well, uh, the big thing is do not mandate uh, entire <laughs> departments to do that stuff. Um, so we have some funding from the state to reduce the cost of textbooks. Immediately, the university system went to Galileo, uh, which is Georgia's statewide library, who has been providing affordable materials for a long time, and said, would you be able to head up this initiative? That's when they stole me. <laughs> but the idea has always been not to go directly to the institutions and say, you will do this thing, but instead say, we will provide you with the uh, funding for the time it takes to do this thing, and the training, and it's you know something that's seen as very innovative. It's something that will probably transform how you teach your course. Um, it'll be a way for you to team up. It'll be a way for you to tell your uh, institution that you brought in some funding from an outside source. That's always a good thing. Um, so it's always a system of incentives for us and not a system of mandates. Now, we have very high up administrative support for this, which really helps. And when they ask, uh, a provost to assign a campus champion or a library coordinator or to find somebody, they will usually do it, even though it's not a mandate. I mean, <laughs> they're going to listen to the executive vice chancellor and chief <laughs> academic officer of the USG. So yes, in some ways, um, having that structure up top and being able to create this kind of community through, through the highest levels of administration and find those champions, I mean, that's, it was a lot easier for us to do that because we had that support. Um, otherwise, you really do have to go in through your community, see people who have already done these things, for example, <laughs> Allison, and then get more champions from there. Uh, for example, at the College of Coastal Georgia, we have somebody who we didn't know about, uh, Herman Vargas. He was the chair of the mathematics committee for the university system. And when he heard about OER from my director, he went and looked at OpenStax and found you know, these different ones that he was going to implement in his courses. And he started going door to door at his college to like sociology professors and being like, hey, how do you like your textbook? Here's this new thing. Why don't you check it out with me? Like so <laughs> yeah, yeah, he became the textbook rep uh, with zero commission because it was zero cost textbooks. <laughs> And uh, now, he's, now he's leading a project to implement all the materials that his textbook transformation grants team implemented. So we've got, uh, I think, nine professors who are doing something called Open Mathematics in Action. Um, so finding those champions can sometimes be top-down, like I've kind of described when we set it up, but it can also be very organic from...